Hi everyone, this is Jill with stampwithjill.com and today we are going to make a pop-up box card. So when this card is flat, it goes in the envelope like this and then when the recipient open it, opens it, it pops up and has all of this fun dimension. So believe it or not, this is super easy to make and we're going to get started. So the first thing you're going to need is two pieces of four by six cardstock for the base of your box. And then for the inside, you need one by five, two of them, pieces of cardstock. I have a variety of hearts cut for the inside, and I used the heart felt die set to cut those. So I just randomly pick some paper. Um, this is candy apple cardstock. And then I'm going to show you the paper that I'm using. This is the follow your heart prints pack and you get a whole bunch of designs in here. Mine is all taken apart and used and I actually combined two packs but there's lots of spring paper. There's some Valentine's paper so it, it goes way more than just Valentine's. So I'm going to bring that up so you can see some of the really pretty patterns. So the top part here is Valentine's and then a lot of these can go either way for any occasion. All right so I also have um, some paper pre-cut and some items pre-stamped, but we're gonna go ahead and score first so we can put our box together. So I'm gonna bring in my scoring tool here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna score both pieces of the, the four by six um, down the long way here at two inches. And then you're gonna do your second piece, scored at two inches. So basically right down the middle. And then you're gonna turn it and score it at two and five and a half. So two and five and a half. Same thing for the second one, two and five and a half. All right, so your box base is done with the scoring. So your one by five pieces, you're gonna to wanna to score at three quarters from each end on both pieces, so three quarters and three quarters. And we are all done with the scoring. So I'm gonna move my scoring back up, plate out of the way, and I'm gonna bring back in my pieces. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is, so I scored on this side, I'm gonna fold it with that crease. And we're just gonna use the, I'm gonna use the scoring tool as my crease tool today. So you're just going to want to fold on all of those score lines and give them a good crease with your bone folder or whatever crease tool that you have. All right, so we are going to just do the second piece here. It doesn't really matter which way you fold it because this thing is going to get pretty decorated. So if there's any minor flaws, no one is going to see it. All right, so I have both of these ready, and then I'm just going to quickly score these end pieces. And then we're gonna put the box together. And I have pre-stamped um, some monsters so you can see how easy it is to put it in. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line these going up in the same direction. So what we are gonna do is we are going to cut on the score lines and we are going to put the box together. So I had to grab my scissors. Of course, they weren't right here on the table. So you're gonna cut on the score line, cut on the score line, and then angle cut that or straight cut it, it doesn't matter. So when they're going the same way, you know you're doing it the right way and you're not gonna mess up the pieces. Um, so we're going to cut on each score line and then angle cut that. Okay, we can just throw these little tabs away. All right, so these top flaps are what is going to open the box. So you want the flaps on the top that are cut. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect this with some liquid glue, this tab and this tab. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue. If you have tear tape or white liner tape, that will work as well. Uh, any really strong adhesive that you have. So I'm just going to put that right there. 
and hold it for a second or two. I'm gonna wipe away the smudge because you don't need that. And then if you fold this guy in and put a little bit of glue there and then fold this over, it lines up and you have your box base. I'm just gonna hold that for a second while the glue dries. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, so now you can see we have the box and that was pretty straightforward. So for the inside, I'm just gonna fold these flaps down so we can see in the open. We are going to glue these in like this and then the second one is gonna go like this. So I'm gonna do this one first and I'm just gonna straighten this out a little bit because it was a little crooked. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each corner here, just like that. So not much, I have a little bit there and a little bit there, but there, you can see how they're kind of pulled in. So we're gonna place one in first and I want that one towards the back. So I'm gonna put that in like that and I'm gonna pinch and hold so the glue dries. So you get this green glue dries pretty quick and then I can pinch and hold the second one. So I'm basically creating a divider. And then um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the box and press and hold. And this will make sure that your box lays flat and your creases are all lined up. Okay, now we're gonna do it again. I'm just gonna make sure these are nice and tight. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of glue on here and a little bit of glue on here. And we're gonna slide these in. So you want to have a little bit of space between the front and the back one. So you can see this one's just a little bit off and that is okay because when we smush it down, it will fix itself. All right, so I'm gonna pinch and hold that so it doesn't wiggle too much. And then when I go like this, we have still bowed a little bit, but it's okay. So we're gonna keep that bowed because by the time I put all the stuff on there, it's, no one's gonna notice. All right, so now we're ready to decorate. You are gonna need a few things. So first off, for the back of the box, I have a piece of uh, Follow Your Heart paper, and this is three and three quarters by three and one quarter. And I am just gonna glue this right there on the back of the box. And what it's gonna do is give the back of it some stability. So I just put some liquid glue. Again, when you use liquid glue, it gives you some wiggle room. So I'm gonna to try to do this where you can see, but I just want that lined up on the back and then you can put your hand in there like so and have it lined up. So now you have the back of your box and mine just a little bit crooked so you still can wiggle it and get it straight. Now for the back, this is where you can write your message. So I have a piece of white whipped cream cardstock and this is cut the same size, three and three quarters by three and one quarter. So I am going to use my black ink and I am just gonna stat, stamp Happy Valentine's Day. This is from, I can't remember what sentiment set, but the link will be in the description in case you need to have one. It has uh, Valentine's, Mother's Day, Father's Day, 4th of July, basically all the sentiments throughout the year. So then you're gonna go ahead and glue this on the back. So you can write to and from and your little message on the back. All right, so now we're ready to do a little bit more decorating. All right, now, so there you go, we have that. So the squares, I have, you're gonna need four paper squares, and these are one and three quarters by one and three quarters, and you are just gonna put them on each panel. So I have one on here and one on this flap. And you wanna make sure, like this one has little tiny hearts. Um, it could go any direction, but you wanna make sure you have your hearts going in the right direction for the way that your box is gonna open. 
So here you can see I have my hearts going here. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put these on the side of the box as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and decorate the side of the box like this. Now I kept my box pretty simple. You could add a cardstock layer under this paper and give it more design. But for this one, I just kept it simple because the paper was super pretty. And then you have two pieces of matching paper, or you can have coordinating paper. It doesn't have to be the same. And this is three and a quarter by one and three quarters. And we're gonna put that on the front panel. So we have that going there, and then one on the front of the box. So this one is going a little bit the wrong direction, but I must have used a scrap when I cut it. But honestly, nobody's going to be looking at that part to notice if my hearts are going in the right direction. But on this part, I definitely have them going all in the right direction. All right, so now we're ready to put the inside components. So I'm going to bring back in the sample. So I have one, two, three hearts here, one here, the monster, another heart, and another heart. So we're going to go ahead and start putting that together. So first things, I am going to do the hearts. So I have a big heart here, and I layered that with some coordinating striped paper. And that is going to go in the back here behind the monster. So what I did was I, I just put a little drop of glue here at the base, and then we just pinch it right to the back of that second divider. And then you kind of want to have it turned a little bit. So there you go, you can see how that is. And then I have a red heart here on the back. So we can go ahead and put that one on. Or maybe, yep, that's good. So we can put a little glue there, pop that in. And then I have some hearts in the front. So I have this guy in the front here. And this is just coordinating striped paper. And then I have a little heart here in the back. So I'm just gonna put a touch of glue here on the front and pinch that into place like so. so. You can see when you have the liquid glue, if you mess up the spot, you can move it. So we have that one there. And then this one is gonna go on the front of the divider overlapping this one like that. And then I have a pink heart for this part right here. And I'm gonna put that one behind there. In my original sample, it has a layer. Um, I can always add that if I want to by gluing it over top of the divider. So now I have some hearts in there and it, it's looking pretty nice. So now I need to add my uh, monsters, my Valentine monsters. So I pre-stamped monster hugs and die cut it with also with one of the um, smaller hearts in the heartfelt die templates and that product will be in the description as well. And then I pre-stamped on scrap paper, I'm wild about you in the word bubble. So we are just gonna go ahead and cut that out. And we are gonna glue that to the top of that heart because it looks like the monsters are talking. Alrighty. So I'm just going to round these up a little bit nicer. So this stamp set does not come with a die set, so you do have to fussy cut it. I actually um, used the monsters um, and cut, die cut them with my scan and cut. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one right here on the heart. I'm going to pinch and hold that. So now you can see it's wild about you. And now we're ready for the monsters. 
So now I'm ready to color the monsters. I am using C1 and C3 for this monster, and I'm giving him his hands and his horns with E00 and RV34. And then for this guy, I'm using C5 for the nose and RV11 for his body. Not much of him is showing, so it's okay to just have two colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and color this guy real quick. And we can, I can add some highlights on him as well. So I'm just going to go around the edges here and color him up. And go around the nose. I could probably color right over that, but because I'm using a darker gray, but it's okay. I'll just color him in. All right, so he's pink. Um, I can use this RV34 to add a few highlights here at the edges of his fur, and I can do his eyelids a little, it's just a little bit darker, but this way here, his fur has a little bit of dimension. And then to blend that in, I'm gonna go back over it with the original pink, which is RV11. And you can see how nicely that blends in doesn't have any harsh lines. And these are just two random pinks that I had in my collection that match the paper. So then for the arms, I'm going to use the skin white and we are actually going to cut off these cute long legs that this little guy has. So just enough to give it some highlights. And then I am gonna trim it right here. And we're gonna pop a little drop of glue here. And this guy is gonna get glued right on the front of the box, like he's peeking in. So because the box is open at the bottom, you can grab that with your finger. And there, so, oh, I forgot to do the nose, whoops. All right, so we're just gonna take the sharp tip and we're gonna go in and color that nose carefully and not make any boo-boos. It's a tiny, tiny little spot, so it's not too hard. All right, so she's ready to go. Since she's pink, we're calling her a she. All right, and then we are going to go ahead and color this gray guy. So I have these two grays, C1, C3. So what I do is I color the entire monster gray with the C1. So it's pretty light and then I'll go back through and add some highlights. So you can see it's got a little bit of color. I didn't want him real, real dark. You could go C3, C5, just any coordinating colors. He's gonna darken up pretty quickly once I add some of the highlights. All right, so I just colored his body and then I have C3 here. And I'm just gonna go around these edges to give his fur some dimension. I think this guy is so cute. I couldn't wait. I bought these guys at Halloween and I could not wait to use them for other projects besides Halloween. Um, I forgot to put the eyes on these guys, but it, it's okay. They look cute without the eyes on you and like the silly glasses, but all right. So we have that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over it again with the C1 and just blend these all in. So you can see he darkens up pretty quickly and kind of blend those in a little bit more so they aren't harsh lines. All right, a little bit there, but not on his tooth. And I think I could add a little bit more here to soften that up a little bit. All right, so there we have that. Now, if you wanted to go darker, you could go C3 and C5 to really darken him up, but I like him this color. So I used the Skin White for his hands and feet, and I just wanted to give him a touch of color there. And you can't see his feet in the actual pop-up of part of the card but um, I'm gonna color them anyway, just in case they look in when nobody wants to see a half-finished project. 
All right, so I just added a little bit of color to that, and we're going to make the horns pink because it's Valentine's Day, and they should be coordinating, I think, anyway. So go ahead and put those on there. And now we are ready to put these guys, put this guy in. So I actually have him on the front of this tab. So a little bit of glue on his feet and he is gonna get glued right to the bottom of that tab. So I slide him down just a little bit and I want him all the way over to the side so you can't really see a ton of the tab. So if I turn you over, you can see his feet are right up at the edge. And there you have the Valentine's Day pop-up. So when this goes into an envelope, you can see that, um, let's see if I have an envelope here. You can see that it folds flat so it's easily mailed. Now if I put a lot of rhinestones and stuff on here, some of my little components are peeking up here, but it's actually just enough room in the envelope to fit. So you don't want to go too far up. All right, so there's the actual card, and then it can sit. You can't really prop it up and film, but it will sit nicely just like that. All right, thanks for joining me today.